That's crazy. Which and, and so once this quarter is done, you have fourth quarter and it is over, folks. It is over. All right, I'm leaving because I can't do that. All right, okay. All right, got some sadness there. Good for you. I just can't wait to be the oldest. Dude, my girlfriend likes her too, man. Like, like, she has for, like, guys. her letter from recommendation See ya. for her for what happened. Dude, I don't know what to She's cool. Actually, I love Kez. Cool. I guess. Has made me sit down in the lab. Uh, Miss Kessler, if you're hearing this on the YouTube video, yes, the class loves One time she yelled at me for putting lip gloss on in the lab. I fake slapped someone like this, and she was like, no drama in the lab. Go sit down. Amen to that. All right. So one thing I need to write down, we're not going to fill all these notes. We're going to fill in different parts. One thing I want you to write is that zero over one is zero. When zero is on the top, you get zero. When zero's on the bottom, it's undefined. We have discussed that before, have we not? Yes. Okay. We're going to use that idea very much so as we graph cosecant and secant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So we are going to graph 1 over sine of x. Okay? And in order to graph 1 over sine of x, we're going to start by just graphing Sine. What can you tell me about the graph of sine? Tell me anything. Wave Makes a wave. In Starts in the middle. Starts in the middle. Maximum value of? Uh, Starts with a wa. Rhymes with un. One. one. <laughs> Minimum value of? Negative. negative one. Period of? One. one. Oh, two. Two pi. Two pi. Oh. So we're going to go up to one. We're going to go down to negative one. If you're getting tired of writing all the tick marks in, that's only normal. Don't feel bad. <laughs> so I have my structure, and I'm not going to graph cosecant. I'm going to start by graphing sine. You told me sine starts where? In the middle, and it's going to go up. And we are going to make a dotted or dashed graph. And by analyzing the graph of sine, it will lead us to the graph of cosecant. So hopefully you're good with graphing sine. That's something that we practiced yesterday. We spent that day. If yesterday didn't make sense, then we should visit in person together. Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, again, this is not the graph. This is just the graph of sine, but cosecant's the reciprocal. Okay? You tell me what is the value of the sine graph right at pi? What's the height of zero? And what's the reciprocal of zero? One. Undefined. See how if you flip zero upside down, you get undefined? Yeah. So therefore the graph of cosecant, it will be undefined whenever sine is zero. So every time I see sine equal to zero, I draw these vertical asymptotes. That shows that the graph is undefined. It never has that value. May look really, really kind of crazy right now, but this is a nice structure. So far, I've not drawn any part of the actual graph of cosecant. I've just drawn a structure that's going to help me generate the graph. So now let's go to the next part. I'm going to not look at zero. I'm going to look at this spot. What is the value of sine right here? What's its height? One. And what's the reciprocal of one? Zero. one. one. So we're going to take the number one over one, which is... One, and we're going to flip it upside down, and we get one. The, the reciprocal of one is one. So the cosecant graph has a height of one right there. Now watch how I'm going to get the rest of the graph. I'm going to move just to the side right there, and I'm going to move just to the side right here. Are these values of the sine graph, are they big values, or are they small values? They are small. What's the reciprocal 
of a small value, a big value. So it's going to look like that. So everywhere where you have a maximum or a minimum of sign, it's going to have those U-type shapes where the graph heads off against the asymptotes. So the blue part is the actual graph of cosecant. The blue part is the actual graph of cosecant. Now, as you look at it, you may say, well, I don't know how accurate that is. If I simply bring up my graphing calculator, here's the graph. Is that pretty accurate to what That's we have? Really good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. So um, secant, instead of graphing secant, we graph y is equal to 1 over the cosine of x. So cosine and secant are reciprocals. We're again going to mark off 1 and negative 1, and the period is 2 pi. We draw our structure, and we go from there. Where is the secant graph going to start? Top. Ah, how come? Um, yep, cosine starts at the top. <laughs> what did she say? Because of the what? Because it does. I like that. Way to go, Hannah. That's the only difference about the secant graph is that we draw cosine. What do you think we do next? We draw our vertical asymptotes. Where will we draw them? Give me one x value where we're going to draw it through here. Y over 2. Any spot where it crosses the x-axis, that's where we draw our asymptote. And then we draw our U shapes. Yeah, it's passing time from lunch. I didn't even know that people still fought at the school. I haven't like heard very much about fights. I did. Um, I'll say I, I really, really give a hand to our administration. Um, I think that they've they've really tried to make sure that uh, we've cut down on that as much as we can. We haven't had to close the bathrooms at all this year, right? Yeah. That, that's good. I mean, last year we, we had two other times. So. Yeah, it's tough. It's almost like you a five gallon pail in each classroom. You know what I mean? Ew. That'd be kind of awkward, wouldn't it? But if you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> All right. We are not going to do this last one here. We're going to do these final two examples. And your homework is just a front page of four problems. You should be able to get it done in class. Because you are super smart, the best of the best. So I have y is equal to negative 3 secant of 2x. When you encounter this kind of problem, you have to decide. Are you going to graph cosine first, or are you going to graph sine first? Cosine. Cosine is the reciprocal of secant. Okay. Cosine is the reciprocal of secant. So I can see here that the amplitude is 3. And I can see that the period is going to be 2 pi divided by what? What do I divide it by? 2. 2. And we get pi. So I'm going to mark off pi and pi over 2 and pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Negative pi, negative pi over 2, negative pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 4.
And where do I start? You start at the bottom because it's negative. Good. So the cosine graph will start at the bottom because it's negative. And again, this is not my actual graph. This is just the structure for how I will get my graph. Then what? Then you make your symptotes. Symptotes right where it crosses over the x-axis. And finally, your U-shapes. Is what we just did, is this a new skill for you? Have you graphed secant before in your life? No. So graphing secant is new, isn't it? When you look at it, does it look like it would be something that is complicated? Yeah. A little bit. But is it that difficult? No. No. So it's new, it looks complicated, but it isn't really that bad because it comes from the structure of the cosine graph. Once we have that, we can get the rest no problem. Our last example, notice that this one does have a vertical shift. The vertical shift is one unit up and the amplitude is 2. The period is simply just 2 pi. On this one, will I graph sine or will I graph cosine? Sine. I'm going to graph sine. Okay. So if the vertical shift is 1, I'm going to go up 1 unit. And it says that the amplitude is 2. So what's going to be the highest value of the graph? 3. Three. You go all the way up to three, and it's going to go down to one. Going to mark off two pi. Should we let her in? No. 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 She really missed the whole first part. She missed the whole lesson. Welcome. Thank you. Where were you? The beach ball popped, remember? Oh, yeah, I forgot the beach ball. Uh, you weren't sick, though. You don't have to share. You do. You don't share your monsters, you don't share your goldfish. I love one, thank you. Everybody good with that structure? Mm -hmm. Okay, you where am I going to start? I start at the middle. And do I go up or down? Up. I go up. How come? Because it's positive. Yep, because it's a positive 2. Now, when you draw your asymptotes, you don't draw them through where it crosses 0. You draw it where it you draw it through where it crosses the um, axis of rotation. So we're going to draw it through where it crosses 1. And then we draw our U-shapes. Your assignment doesn't have any vertical shifts, and it doesn't have any horizontal shifts. You only have to focus on the amplitude of the period. There are just four problems. The answer key is already posted on the board. Your final assignment for this unit.